things that I would just come up with and, you know, like things that I would write and then I would post it on Vine. And one of those things went viral, which was, it was really? this Vine that I wrote. It was like, I keep holding on to you and you keep letting go. Bring me a bad word. Hey, Michael. So this podcast is about you, man, and your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. Oh, my gosh. What a setup. <laughs> what a setup. And awesome. I'm so excited. Very cool. Where were you born and raised? I was born in. Hold on. Let me just make sure I'm speaking it here. Um, I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. OK. Um, and raised in, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for 18 years. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. What was it like growing up in Philadelphia? Oh, my gosh. Well, the food was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, best one. And then um, it was great because it was it, it's very family oriented. It's huge, but it's small. So everybody knows everyone like, you know, I, I, I kind of came up with that the other day when I was talking to my mom because we had gotten a call from someone and it had been so long since I talked to them but mm -hmm. it, it just made me remember like wow a lot of people know me and I really know a lot of people you know That's so really cool. it's 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 community based which is is great about Philadelphia for sure did you grow up in the city I grew up in the city I am okay. a city boy so public transportation was my thing yeah was what's that like thing. I mean talk about freedom right freedom yes yes <laughs> freedom but also stress yeah. <laughs> stressful but yeah it was um i'm a city boy for sure yeah you know? very cool and how, how yeah. did you get into music when did you realize you could sing oh my gosh i was pretty young and i was about i'll say five but you know what i always knew what i wanted to do from a young age but it didn't really turn into me really knowing that this is what I wanted to do until I was like eight years old. Like when I was five, like it's just everybody found out that I could sing. Like my mom heard me singing in the bathtub one day and she was like, oh my God, like my son is, he's a vocalist. What are we gonna mm -hmm. do? And then I started singing in like uh, Christmas pageants at school and Christmas plate, not Christmas plays, but plays. And then my church um, that I grew up in, like fully backed it, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I had, uh, solos on Sundays and and that's kind of when it when it developed and everybody found out Ooh, this boy can he can blow he can sing <laughs> that's cool especially that your mom was that supportive and really you know realized what talent you had and ran with it right yeah yeah I, I'm very lucky to have the the mother that I have from a young age like you know she's been through this process with me like side by side so yeah that's so cool yeah. um you mentioned like you didn't know what you wanted to do until you were eight. I mean, eight's still really <laughs> young. And you only been like, you talking about singing at five. So we're three years in and you're like, this is what I'm going to do. You just yeah. knew that. I just, you know, I just knew Adam. Cause I, I don't know. It was luckily singers and artists in general. I think it's always something that they find out. Well, a majority of them, it's always something that they find out this is what they want to do at a young age. And then mm -hmm. like, as the years go by, you know, you, some people are probably hit with like the question after analyzing everything, like, is this really what I want to do? But right. you always find out when you're really young, you know, mm -hmm. you always do. And um, you kind of also can land in that spot where it's like, this really isn't that stable of a career, right? Like, yeah. Oh, we all, we all get hit with it, especially, you know, this is when you want to be an artist you're in it for the long the long haul <laughs> so you know there are years sometimes when nothing happens um mm -hmm. and then you're like faced with uh you know i gotta make some money in the future like is this what you want to do but you know um the champions are definitely the people that stick it out and would would die go go to the grave for their art you know i'm one sure of them. so <laughs> yes <laughs> you, what, was there a moment when you were eight like that you can recall being like oh this is definitely, I have no interest in doing anything aside from this, as far as like. I think if I, I've, I've had a couple stages. Like I, I know that eight was like the first one because that was like when I had my first Broadway audition. Wow. And you auditioned on Broadway that early? I what? did. I did. Okay. And I was, I was as green as they come. I was definitely <laughs> a diamond in the rough. Like I remember my first audition and they asked me how many brothers or sisters that I had. And it goes back to like being in Philadelphia and knowing a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. So that meant that means I have like a lot of God brothers and God, God sisters. Oh, sure. I remember 
Yeah, I remember telling the casting agent that I had like six, a combination of six brothers and, and sisters. And it's not the truth. I only I only had one one sister and, and two brothers on my dad's side, you know, okay. but I definitely stretched it out. <laughs> uh, but I think that's that's one of the the moments that I definitely realized this is what I wanted to do. And then I had another moment about like maybe two years afterwards when like Justin Bieber came on, came out mm -hmm. on the scene. And, you know, I, I saw his like one time music video playing on MTV and I was like, I can do this. Like, I can definitely do this. And then I went into my mom's room and had like a whole two hour conversation about it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, what did you do? You play an instrument? I do. I play the piano. Piano. When, when did you start playing piano? That was that was a young age, too. Okay. I think it was around around eight. I remember my first piano instructor. His name was Mr. Les. He was great. But did you, yeah. were you going through recitals and all that fun stuff, too? I did. I did all of that. All okay. the recitals and, and things like that. I wish I stuck with it, though, because now I'm like I, I consider myself to be a trained pianist by ear. But mm -hmm. I wish that I would have stuck stuck it out in classes for sure. You know, OK. But, but yeah. I, yeah, if you can hear it, you can play it. Right. I mean, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> did you go to school for music at all? So I went of I've, I've always been in performing arts um, schools from a young age um, oh, okay. from kindergarten. So my first school was um, heavily based in, in the performing arts. As a matter of fact, it was um, named Meredith Elementary School for Performing Arts. So, um, and then high school was a little different <clears throat> because I was um, homeschooled for a majority of it. Mm -hmm. But I guess you could say it's still the arts because that's around the time I started to really develop my songwriting and producing skills, you know, just not having anything to do every day and, you know, just going and recording and songwriting. And then um, for college, I, I went to a music school uh, named Musicians Institute on Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, you so, did? Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. I so did. you moved out I to did. LA for, for college? I did. I okay. um, In 2016. Mm -hmm. Nice. You talked about songwriting in high school. Is that when you started to really attempt the songwriting thing or like when did that start? Yeah. So um, I, I started, I feel like I wrote my first song when I was 11, I'm going to say. Wow. And you've been 11. doing this for a long time. I mean, a long, young age. Like yeah, 11 years I know. Old to write music. That's cool. I know. I know. My, my story has a lot of layers to it you know because i started <laughs> so young so i have like several different um eras in my life of this music i love thing, it i love it yeah so from that era what was the next era then from the like you started writing songs you were recording them also in high school yeah so well i started writing songs i feel like about the age of 11 i remember writing having a microsoft word document and that's how like probably out of touch and, and young I was with like how to, you know, really write songs. Like when I was 11 writing a, a Microsoft Word document, there's probably like 700,000 people in the studio, like doing it correctly. Right. But, you know, I thought that's how you did it. So yeah, you don't you know. know right? And it was, I, I have, I had no clue. And it was like really long and I would like, you know, open it up every day and like sing it all by memorization. And then as, as time went on, I um, winded up being able to get a uh, software for um software uh for recording yeah for recording mm -hmm. and um i hooked it up in my room two speakers keyboard monitor um microphone headphones all of that and um i i started working with that in the ninth grade so i spent four years of high school like developing that skill and sharpening that um that tool of songwriting and producing and um, I would upload those things to SoundCloud, like the finished products, which uh -huh. were only like six, six songs that I really uploaded to SoundCloud in that time. And then I have like a bunch of songs that are just like unfinished that in my mind I've locked away. And I'm like, I'm going to revisit those. One <laughs> With those six songs, what was the next step? Like, did you see, did one of them blow up or like, how did you kind of progress in your career? Yeah. So after after like releasing those songs, it was a bunch of things I was doing in that time span. So Vine, the app Vine oh, was yeah. out at the time. Okay. And um, I use that to like, I would post six second freestyles of like things that I would just come up with and, you know, like 
things that I would write and then I would post it on Vine. And one of those things went viral, which was, it really? was this Vine that I wrote. It was like, I keep holding on to you and you keep letting go. And it was like a six second clip. It ended up going viral on Vine. And then I would just like use that fan base that I had like collected. Mm -hmm. And then I would go ahead and release the songs that I had been working on while being in that Vine. Oh yeah, uh, brilliant. Era. Right. You know? yeah. What was it like having a viral song like that or a viral moment? Was it something that just kind of woke up to or was it like a slow burn? It was like a fast slow burn because okay. that that's the magic of, of social media for sure. Because mm -hmm. it's like you never know what's going to hit. But when it does, it is the most exciting feeling because you're on cloud nine for weeks and months. Right. Right. You know, because you're seeing it grow steadily a lot, but you know, it's, it's slow. It's over time. So I think as soon as I posted it, you could tell that it's special because of the reaction that you get from the followers that you already have. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, Oh, wow, this is great. And then you go to sleep and then you wake up to like a thousand and then you go to school. And then a couple hours later, it's like at 3,000, 4,000, it just goes on every day and every day like that. It's mm -hmm. like TikTok, you know? Yeah. It happens on TikTok too. But yeah, um, it, it it was pretty cool to know like what I was creating was being reciprocated so well, you know? Sure, like a it validating so moment well. for you. Yeah, for sure, you know? And I did it because I, I do it because I love it, but, you know, it's good to have that little, you know, right, a, of uh, course. reassuring moment. Reassurance, yeah. Like, okay, I am doing what I should be doing. If no one cared at all and you've been, you know, then it's like, well, maybe I should probably think about trying something else. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, But it was great. It was great. That's cool. How old were you when that Vine thing happened? Or like, what grade were you in? I was like 15. 15 oh, or wow. 16. Okay. Yeah. So you're still in high school. I was in high school. Yeah, still. Um. Yeah, but it it all it all definitely happened for the best because I had like went through this dark period around the time because I had um just another part of my life story. I went through. I did this a uh, reality competition called Majors and Minors. Um, it was like on the Hub Network. I had won it, but like the deal fell oh, through. Oh, really? I didn't, didn't go well. Tell me about this show. I didn't. I've never even heard of it. I feel bad. No, it's okay. I don't think a. Uh, a lot of people did, but at the same time, you know, it was more so underground. Really, shows don't pick up till like the second season. So, you know. Sure. Um, but yeah, I had did this competition, like just going back to me being young mm -hmm. and, um, you know, coming from pursuing it at such a young age. Like at the age of 12, I had auditioned for this reality uh, TV show and um, like 40,000 kids auditioned and only 12 were selected. And um I was one of the 12. So they bought us out to LA. Mm -hmm. And that was like my first introduction to Los Angeles, really. Mm -hmm. um, and being so young, that also plays a part into knowing that this is what you want to do, because I just fell in love. And they it, the show really taught us the ins and outs of like the industry, like recording, songwriting, and um, also performing. And um, I, I just fell in love. I, I had never really viewed it from, viewed the industry from a secular standpoint because mm -hmm. I had been singing gospel like all my life prior to so this was the first time like I'm covering like baby by Justin Bieber and like forget you by CeeLo Green and mm -hmm. and things like that and like um writing an R&B song you know like th that was like my first introduction to the industry really and you know I fell in love so afterwards I winded up winning the show because it was a competition was it and, like um, similar to i mean uh, we'll talk about it because obviously you're on yeah. american idol too but um is it similar like what's the vibe of the show like I'm, uh, is it like 12 people yeah. perform and then you have judges that go you know you're not yeah. advancing or how did how they have it set up yeah so it was just like 12 kids that were really mm -hmm. talented and wanted to pursue careers in the arts all singers um and we would have like celebrity mentors and you know established artists that were working you know they would come in like i met adam um adam lambert oh wow he, he was, he was like, getting in that way early wasn't he <laughs> yeah he was but i think this was like about three years after he had um competed on american idol so uh, okay you know yeah so i met him i met avril lavigne wow Jordan sparks ryan yeah. tedder Adam Lambert um, went to my high school. He's a couple of years older than me. He did not. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. No, it's oh, okay. Go ahead. Both of your names are Adam. Yeah. Well, real quick. Great. I know this isn't about me, but it 
it's funny that okay so his brother was my age he, he was older um but when he was on american idol i have a sister that's 11 years younger than me wow. and she was in i think ninth grade maybe or i think eighth or ninth grade and you know how they yeah. do on the hometown thing where yes. they come back home he so played cool. at the high school and they brought all the kids from the middle school and the high school. So she like got to go see him like at the play at the school for the American Idol thing. I just thought that was that cool. is crazy. Yeah. They just took everybody out of school that day and they're like, go, you know, you get to watch him perform or whatever. Wow. I bet you that's probably like so nostalgic for her. For sure. I know. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. That is nuts. <laughs> She's like, do you that's know, crazy. did you know him? Cause I'm older. I'm like, no, I knew his brother. He was yeah. even older than me, but yeah, it was just, it was just funny. So anyway, wow. sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. I live, I live for it. You know, a good so, story. So that show, so you, what, you auditioned, what, in person? You said 40,000 people did it. You got picked up and you yeah. moved through. You're 12 and you go on through the competition. You ended up winning. Mm -hmm. And what happens yeah. when you win? I mean, aside from the, like, the clout. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is all, always great, you know, press. <laughs> right. But um, yeah, so I wound up uh, winning. And um, it was like, you would win a record deal, but it kind of like fell through, you know, um, and which was unfortunate. Um, but I was, so I was young and it was very kind like, of depressing. Yeah. Defeating where you got to like, is this something that should keep going? It, yeah, it, it, it was, it was definitely depressing because it was like months of months of like, you know, you know, surviving off of the, um, I guess, idea that you're going to go back to LA and like you're going mm -hmm. to start your career, career you know, artist, because you yeah. just won the show. But it, it like, it didn't happen that way. So it was very, it was very depressing for, for mm -hmm. me as a, as a chap, as a young yeah. kid. I, but, I um, can definitely see that. Yeah. So it was kind of like uh, four years of that, which played a part of me going into homeschool because I hated like the actual high school um, that I was in. But it, the beauty in that was like learning how the industry works so young and also mm -hmm. being able to cope with that rejection kind of like made me tougher. And you have to be really tough for this industry. Yeah, you got to have some um, thick skin, don't you? <laughs> you have some thick skin. Um, so, so, yeah, but like moving on, like onward, that four years is like the time that I really like dove into developing my sound and developing my voice and developing my art you know mm -hmm. because and that's how I was able to the show is how I was able to afford my little home studio system so oh all cool into that all right um, with yeah. real quick on the you said you had to go you know after the show you returned did you ever return to high school or did you just start doing homeschool right after the show I returned to high school but I hated it because what was that uh, like like were people like I mean I couldn't uh, were people nice to you? Were they like jealous of you? I mean, you were on this national tel television show and you win the whole thing. Like, did that yeah. help your high school experience or hinder it? No, like really Philly is so, so community based. So okay. when, when you're living there, you actually do get um, a lot of support. And I'm sure there are like naysayers. Like I'm sure my mom can give you plenty of, of stories, <laughs> you know, because, but I was like, so green, you know, and, yeah. and like, why did I bushy tail? Like, I was like, you know, I didn't really hear any hair, any hate or, or really mm -hmm. receive any, especially from my peers and like my friends, they were the most supportive, like the That's most great. supportive. That's so cool. high school wasn't really a bad experience because of like the people that I was around. It was just because I, I, knew that I wanted to be somewhere that wasn't high school in Philadelphia. Right, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like I wanted to be living my dream. You know, I just yeah. had like gotten, gotten, um, you know, home from the dream and I wanted to go back, you know? Okay. So that's so why. How, did, how do you continue on after the record deal falls out and everything? Oh my God. Um, well, buying studio equipment and okay. <laughs> making songs and kind of like developing an online fan base um, around the time and also planning goals for my future. Like I knew that that was not the last time I was gonna be in LA. I was like, I need to get back there somehow. Mm -hmm. And um, as time goes by, it's time for college. So when I got to college after like writing these songs and you know developing my artistry, I knew that that was my escape. Mm -hmm. So my mom found a school called Musicians Institute um, and before before even jumping into that um, story, like it's funny, like around the time 
that the college conversation started to happen. Like I wasn't going to go to school for music because I think I had been like so jaded, you know, by being in Philadelphia oh, yeah. for so long. I was like, maybe, maybe I should go to college for like something else. Like, so I was going to go for psychology. Oh, cool. And uh, but me and my mom like had this conversation and she was, and I was like so miserable. I was like, Mom, I don't think I want to. I don't think I can do this. Like, I have to go for music. And she was like, it's very like quotable. Like if I ever did a movie for myself, like one one day, if there's like a biopic, you know, like I would definitely include this line. But my mom was like, you just can't get away from the music, can you? And I was like, no, it was so dramatic. But like, I love that. Was, I can hear so that genuine. in like a trailer for your life. Like <laughs> for real, for real, for real. <laughs> seriously, seriously. Adam. But it was it was the most genuine moment. But then as you like a- analyze it years later, it's like, wow, we were so dramatic. But it was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> so, it, but it, it was real. It was definitely real. That's cool. So she obviously got on board, sent you to school in, in Hollywood. She did. She did. Um, and I know that was hard for hard for her, but I think she knew how much I wanted this and mm-hmm. like, yeah, just how much I wanted it. And um, based off of her faith and her believing that I was going to be OK, like she just she sent me off. And I, I knew that I wanted to to come to Hollywood for sure. Like mm-hmm. I, I had been there when I was young and then like we had two trips there in between the time I shot that um reality show and in between the time I went to college, like we went back twice. So um, I definitely was well accustomed to like LA and I was like, this is where I want to go. And um, yeah, so when college came around, I just went. Were you going back to do like, like songwriting sessions or was it just to kind of meet people Mm -hmm. meetings, like get your foot in the door? Um, No, just visiting with friends. Um, And, and, and also like auditions, like just, just little things. Um, Okay. Because even my sister was involved. Um, I have a little sister. Um, not that little, like, you know, she's like four <laughs> years younger than me. But yeah, she was getting involved and she was like auditioning for commercials and things. Oh, so okay. um we just we just went to get more well accustomed with like um what that life is like, you know, mm-hmm. in the more for like starving artists, you know? Yeah. Like that just makes trying total to get sense. your foot in the door. Yeah. Sure. So you go there to sc- go to school and then what's the next chapter? <sighs> College. Oh, uh-huh. boy. College, okay. college, college. So, yeah, so I moved out here for school um, and also still pursuing music, like any avenue where I could be able to perform, like I definitely took. Um, and luckily, my school was very supportive of that. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I always plug Musicians Institute, because I think it's it's one of the most perfect um, experiences for a young adult wanting to get their education in music, but also um, not being shy to the reality that you have to kind of like pursue it as soon as possible. Cause uh-huh. you know, the music industry doesn't really wait for anybody. Mm-hmm. So um, they, they definitely, the school was the right choice for me cause they expressed to me, they're like, Michael, get your education, but also if there's an audition, go for it. If there's a show, play it. You know, if there's an opportunity, seek it. That's you know, cool. so um, it, it was great. But um, then you don't have to juggle yeah. the two. It's like, do I need to go to class or should I take this opportunity that maybe someone is going to be in the audience that sees me or, you know, anything exactly. like that. Exactly. So it the, the um college, the college experience ties into American Idol because I auditioned for American Idol through my college. And a lot really? Of people know that. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't, it wasn't like they found your song or a vine and they were like, oh yeah, like we were interested. You went through, did you wait in the line or did you get a little bit of a head? Okay. And this is the story. I want to hear so, it. Um, <laughs> one day I was sitting in, um, what was it called? I think, it, oh, vocal. so it was like um, my vocal performance class. So okay. this is a class that you have to, you're giving like standards, contemporary mm-hmm. standards, you know, like, um, songs that mm-hmm. play on the radio right, um right. you know you're giving me songs and you have to perform them um every class you know you're assigned to um a song every class so i was sitting in this class and i got a email um on my school's email at the time and i'm like they they said that they're having auditions for um this show that i can't name because this there's a show before american idol that i auditioned for uh, so okay. um you know, but yeah, I'm just playing it safe with that. So I auditioned. <laughs> so I got the Get email it. for the show and, mm-hmm. and they're like, uh, the school's holding auditions 
for it. And I literally had one, I checked the email one hour before um, the deadline to audition. Wow. So I submitted like this video of me singing that was on YouTube and um, they were like, yeah, cool, come audition. So I went to like the auditorium the next day or the mm-hmm. theater as my sister's institute would call it. Mm-hmm. Um, went to the theater like the next day and auditioned in front of like the dean and the casting director from this you know huge show. reality show um i winded up making it through um shout out to my to my school for you know making the connection mm-hmm. and um i went to meet with did the whole formal casting meeting with the producers and i winded up making it to the stage um actually shooting an episode of the show mm-hmm. i wound up making it through um four yeses from the judges and then I got an email a week later that they wouldn't be accepting me into the next round. So you can imagine how crushing that was. What? Yeah. But the twist <laughs> here, Adam, is in the email, they said that they were bringing back a show called American Idol. Um, you know, it had been off air for a while, but they uh-huh. said they're bringing it back and they wanted me to come audition for that. No lines, just like um oh, an audition okay. in front of the producers so and, they're like um, you're not going to be on this show even though everybody wanted you on this show yeah. you're not going to be there but you have this opportunity to try out for a, american idol now yes yeah. okay weird so around this time it, it was it's very weird and uh, it's oh my god so many stories people could probably tell you about what goes on behind the scenes but it was it was hard because you know we're in college now mm-hmm. you know we're and i started when i was eight so yeah. you can imagine like at least 10 year grind, 10 year <laughs> grind. And, you know, I was well accustomed with like the reality TV thing, like, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, you had already won one. Yeah. I had already won one and then in between that time and, and the whole like rejection from that big reality TV show. Like mm-hmm. I had went out for like the voice a couple times and like, Oh, this, know, I audition. thought you were, I thought for sure you were talking about the voice. <laughs> no, 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 no. This, it just, just compartmentalize after the interview. You'll yeah, definitely I will. I mean, now because I'm like reeling in my head. I'm like, this has got to be the voice he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like that. Okay. But um, uh, yeah, it was um, y- you know, it was hard because I already had suffered from so much rejection prior to, mm-hmm. and um, so when I got the email about coming to audition for um, American Idol, you as you could imagine, I was pretty like hesitant and mm-hmm. um you know, reluctant to go for sure. Like, I just was like, I don't want to, I don't, I want to prevent as much rejection from now on as possible. Like I'm right, not built for yeah. this right now. Like it's, this is not going to be good for me if this is a no. All right. Um, But I went, I went, you know, and mm-hmm. it was probably one of the worst auditions of my life. Like I had a is cold. Is that right? Oh. Yeah. I had a cold. I, I already had like this attitude, like being so mad about like, yeah, all these of course. You know, competition shows are like I was I was so upset. And it was like the producers of American Idol really didn't do anything to me, you know, but I was like I was so over it, you know, and mm-hmm. um, luckily, by the grace of God, the um, casting director that actually sent me the email, you know, he he had already heard how I how I sounded and how he um, knew. Yeah. He knew. You know, so the like, audition okay. was just kind of like maybe just going through the motions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm, I hope I'm pretty sure that he put in a good word for me. Um, but it, it goes to show that like when it's meant for you, like it's meant for you, and not even you can mess it up because right. <laughs> I, I thought I messed it up, and I was like, I was so angry. I didn't even care after the fact. I was like, Mom, I'm tired of this. Like you know. And then like I was leaving the building, and somebody chased me out and was like Michael wait come back like you know the storyline producers want to talk to you and I was like oh okay Uh mom I'll call you back you know and then I went back and um talked to the producers for like two hours and the rest was like history wow oh my gosh and then did you go what to Hollywood week you're already in Hollywood this is when I met Katie okay This is wow. what I'm and, um, and she changed everything for you, right? It's, I mean, yeah. with the, the record label and everything. Well, I want to hear about that. So you go yeah. on American Idol, you make it to the top five, right? Yes. Top okay. Five. Which is um crazy. It doesn't happen. Like it no. does not happen. No. I've interviewed a few a couple people from American Idol. 
Yeah. And everybody has a similar story. And I think different, but similar in the sense mm -hmm. that it's crazy to me that they let you guys have your phones the entire time. Right. So you're yeah, just reading Twitter and everything else about people, <laughs> what the people are saying about you. Was that hard not to do? Oh my God. It was, it was easy to do, but it was like, I, I don't even, I don't even think I hesitated. Like after a performance, uh -huh. I would definitely go straight to my phone really? all the time. What, Everybody like, would. But you know, like all the comments aren't going to be positive, even because everyone hates no matter what, because they can behind a phone, right? Yeah, they so, can. They can. So was that hard to keep going on and keep your confidence level up? I, you know what? I, Adam, you're going to make me flex because this is like an <laughs> unintentional flex. I want to like, hear it. I'm very humble. But uh -huh. as you could probably can tell, Adam, but like, I didn't really receive that much. So oh, that's great. Like, that's great. It's then. a good thing. It's a good yeah. thing. You would go. And I remember there was one time I had this one performance where I knew it sucked. I knew it sucked. Um, but it the the reception wasn't horrible from uh uh from the other like six or seven that I did on the show. So yeah. Well, well it's it was, like it you could good. even nail, but I guess my point is you could nail it up there, right? And some idiot yeah. in wherever part of the country can yeah. just not like you for whatever reason and be like eh, michael sucks why is he on the show it's like yeah because it's so subjective yeah. but it's just yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's why it's good to have confidence and and it's good to make sure that a majority of the reassuring comes from within you know because mm -hmm. like you have to know that you did good you know right so right. there were moments where i'm like i nailed this i think mm -hmm. But I'm I'm pretty sure I did good, and mm -hmm. and then you go to the comment section, and if you see some negative comments, like it doesn't get you down, mm -hmm. and of course, like you see some, but I'm just glad that the majority of comments were always positive. That's great. Um, you know, which could play a part in why I made it so far. <laughs> pretty cool. You well, know. you made it. Okay, so you make it obviously top five, and then when does the conversation yeah. with Katy Perry happen about like working together? and you oh my know gosh. this venture and everything that's going on now yeah well i'll start from the first audition let's um, hear it i so i had made it past the producers round mm -hmm. and i was like in in class i was still at musicians institute and i had only been at musicians institute for maybe like two years in uh as a whole mm -hmm. um so i was in class i was in the photoshop class i remember like it was yesterday <laughs> and um raised my hand i said hey i have to step out for a second um, and I talked to one of the producers and was like, Michael, you know, you've made it through. Um, you made it through pretty much. You're uh -huh. coming to audition in front of the judges. So I went and auditioned. How cool rep. is that? Were you, were you stoked when you got the phone call or was it kind of like, oh, I'm back involved in this, this whole reality TV mess again? Oh my God. Well, I was, I was definitely stoked. Um, okay. and, and by this time I had gotten over the hump. Okay, so I, I didn't know if you're still in the in the hump. I didn't know. No. Okay, you're out of. Could the you hump. imagine? I I would hate to like be so pretentious like the whole reality <laughs> competition, you know, experience. Right. Well, like, I mean, once they air you on the episode, I think maybe you'd be like, see, <laughs> you know, or you're doing the live shows, like, but it's like you, yeah. you made it through before, and they still didn't want to keep. No, moving. I was I was on cloud nine. I was feeling okay. much better about life in in general. You know, I like um, it. Okay. I was good. I had like dealt with you know, my trauma of rejection by the time I got the phone call. But I was still, I wasn't angry, but I was still nervous. Like I was okay. nervous. I was like, you know, I'm grateful to have even made it to the judges because like, I just knew even that didn't happen, making it that far. Mm -mm. Um, but I will say I had no idea Katie liked me as much as everybody was telling me the whole time really? I had no idea I, because I was just focused on making it to like the next round you mm -hmm. know I was like I had almost got I was like getting kicked out of my dorm around the time I needed a place to stay you know I just wanted to make it make it through you know mm -hmm. um but it, it was it was definitely a, a great eye-opening um experience for me but yeah I made it past the Hollywood judges and then came Hollywood week um and and the craziness that is Hollywood week um, and that's kind of when I had my moment. I sang like this this song called Maybe This Time uh, from the Broadway classic Cabaret. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of like when I think everybody had a realization like who I was. And even I think I had an 
realization at that moment who I was too, you know? Um, and then time goes past, you know, you perform and perform and perform, you make it through and make it through. And then um, before you know it, you're like in the top 10, it turns into the top seven, that turns into the top five. And around this time, I think when I made it to the top five, I think I was, I was ready. I was like, you know, I think, I think I've, I've, I've made um, my stance on the show. I right. Made an impact. Everybody knows, you know, made an impact. And I think I was just like ready, you know, okay. to go ahead and, and live life and go and pursue my career, you know, from the fans mm -hmm. that I had acquired. Sure. Um, yeah. And I, I went home and then comes the story of me getting signed afterwards. <laughs> So you yeah. come home, obviously the show continues on. Are you, you're probably watching it or whatever, right? Trying one to see episode. What I only missed one episode, Adam. I got sent home right before the finale. Oh <laughs> yeah. Cause it would go top three then. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, top three. So, so then you watch the episode or you, uh, maybe you don't watch the episode and then the, the season's over. Right. And then what you get a phone call from Katy Perry and there, she's like, Hey, um, <laughs> yeah. Well, so the season, the season's over and I, I flew to New York actually. Like I didn't really go home at all. Okay. I, um, I think when people say, um, uh, I went home, like they just, they're insinuating, they, um, they're implying right. they left the show. Right. Right. Where they got sent home. Right. Um, so, yep. Yeah, so I flew to New York because we had to do something to promote the show, um, for, for the network mm -hmm. for ABC and, um, is it ABC or CBS? It's ABC. It's, it's ABC. ABC. It was on Fox, yes. and then I think it went back to ABC. It was ABC. Yes. Yeah. Love ABC, by the way. Love it. Um. So yeah, uh, got sent home, but I really went to New York to just promote the show for um the uh you know high ups at ABC. You know, uh -huh. like I sang some songs with the rest of the cast members, and then I flew back for the finale. Um, right after, because okay. I performed a song with um one of my heroes, Yolanda Adams. She's a great gospel singer. Um, and then came the conversation with my manager at okay. the time who told me like, yeah, Katie will sign you tomorrow. And that's how I found out, found out. Wow. Did you know she yeah. had a label? Cause you're only third person that she signed. I'm a third person, but I had no clue. No, I, I really had no clue. I think I was just infatuated with, you know, who, who the legend that Katy Perry is, you know, I was, I just, I wasn't really thinking about getting signed by a judge or like by anybody watching the show. Cause it, it rarely happens anymore. Yeah, Back in the it day it did, but now it doesn't happen as much, you know, where you'll get the call that a label exec is like watching the show and it's like, Hey, I want to meet with you. It doesn't happen. So for Katie to, you know, trust that I was, you know, the, the right decision, like I'm so grateful for that because mm -hmm. i i definitely didn't see it coming i didn't see it coming at all that's what when did you get signed with with her was that 2019 or 2019? 2019 i went on i went on tour in 2018 for three months three months which was another eye-opening um experience for me um that showed me kind of like the ins and outs of touring and i fell in love with it um but throughout tour like i will always i had a chain of uh communication with katie which i'm so grateful for um because me and my ptsd with rejection like yeah. <laughs> i was like god i hope katie isn't reneging like you know like most yeah, of the time that's right. how my thoughts were and i was like ah so i like dm'd her and she would reply back but literally what i appreciate is that she was so um blatant and like blunt with it like it wasn't like you know her being super um mysterious and like yeah or, you know like, she was literally she literally told me like no you're getting signed like don't worry like she wow. just reassured me you know uh -huh. verbatim so it's like yeah she's so amazing for that because as an art as her being like a starving artist one time in her career like I know she probably understood Michael's probably suffering right now mm -hmm. you know right yeah yeah and so do you you got a couple of songs and new songs out. Um, were those, did she work with you on the record or like, how does, like, what is her role in, in this? Like when she signed you? Yeah. So um, shortly after in 2019, I um, started my recording process, which okay. is another layer of my life story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so many, so many moments. We need a couple hours, Adam. For <laughs> I'm being very like, I'm just giving you a lot of summer summarization right now. I love it. But yeah. Um, 
yeah so 2019 I got signed and then I started recording and it was it's on a uh development basis which I'm really uh-huh. grateful for you don't really see artists getting developed in today's no. day and time which no. is you, you do need that for I, I would say generally in the industry mm-hmm. we should get back to that um you I know it's a good agree. way to create stars for sure yeah um but yeah, on a on a uh, development basis, um, I started recording, and Katie like expressed to me that she wanted me to find the sound, and that I had as much time as I needed to be able to find that sound. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just and and I made it clear to Katie and uh, my whole team over at at a unsub that um I, I don't like to really tend to stick to to a genre, um. I'm, I'm very experimental. So mm-hmm. I, I said that my artistry is in my voice. So I want to work with everybody and anybody uh, that I see fit. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were like, yeah, go do it. So I went to the studio immediately. And now I'm like 150 songs in. I have a list on my phone of songs that I collect after every session. I go home and wow. write it down like a crazy person. <laughs> no, like, that's. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. 100. And you've only what put out the two, though, two records. I've only put out two. Um, you know, I think my label is definitely um, a believer in time and that it can take a lot of time. But of course, um, yeah. it, it, me putting out the two records was definitely me stressing like, y'all, I'm ready. Let's, Let's get the show on the road. Let's go. <laughs> like, it's time. <laughs> um, so luckily they were, uh, you know, uh, very... Uh, what's the word I guess they responded well and decided Mm -hmm. to let me go ahead and start releasing um and luckily my label likes what I'm doing so I get to you know release what I want um so yeah I'm two songs in and the third one is coming in January amazing I love the first two you got they're they're amazing why you texting me was the first one you you put out um when was this where like where are we at as far as like when COVID happened did that create more time for you to be in the studio and record or Did it affect you as far as like not being able to work with people and was, were you working on this, these, these 150 songs over the course of the beginning of 2020 on? Yeah. Well, I started in, in April of 2019 after my trip to Coachella. Ah, Yes. Oh, nice. Every time time I think (laughs) about April, I think about that trip. It was great. Um, Yeah. And I started immediately. um, And I guess it was just a collection of just the songs that I had made over the past um, two years mm-hmm. um, and COVID really didn't slow me down much um, luckily my the studio that I work out of is very compliant um, mm-hmm. and very strict about reinforcing rules so everything was very safe um, but yeah. we did take like maybe like a month and a half gap for sure and then like uh, Zoom I think that's when Zoom had its assurgence you know oh, and like sure. so there was where Skype you know, was just totally missed the mark man I was talking Shout to out about to this Skype, earlier, but like, <laughs> yeah, blew it, blew it. It was, yeah. I, I, you know, but I think nobody saw this coming. I don't think oh, anybody gosh. really saw it coming. Oh, so no, no. I feel bad for Skype because this was really the time. Yeah, <laughs> like, they must have been sleeping when this happened. What happened? Yeah, um, it was a lot. I think they just panicked. But yeah. Zoom sessions definitely came in and played a part. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2020, and then um, before you know it, I was. Before you knew it, I was back in the studio, really. So I don't think I really missed a beat. You That's know? good. And you're also, you did a, a movie for Netflix, which spun out into, like, what? A tel- it's the sh- series on Netflix now? Yeah, the series on Netflix and the movies on Netflix is called All of the Alligator Boys. So hmm. I recorded a bulk of that in uh, 2020 um, as well. So during and how did that how did that phases, relationship start? Like, do, were you in acting prior to that, or was it? Because I know you obviously sing a lot in the show. Yeah. Well, I did some acting, but acting never really took off. And I decided that I was like going to prior prioritize music. And then Makes I sense. think it just happened. It happened very organically with that movie because I got an email from um, some cast from a casting director that told me that people were looking for me over at Netflix and how to get in touch with me. And I was like, OK, here's my manager's contact. And then before you know it, I had a audition in like June of 2018. And mm-hmm. then I wound up getting the part like five months later. Um, and they told me that I had already gotten the part. And I think my audition really was them watching the TV show because my uh, personality really uh, shined through on, mm-hmm. on the TV show and like uh, my animated way of speaking, um, especially when I get excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, 
yeah, I think that was like my audition process really. Um, and it just happened. And I started recording in 2019 and all the way through the pandemic. Wow. Is it different recording something like that versus a record of your own? Yes, because you're not you're not writing the records. So um, it, it is different. But luckily for me, I, I'm a singer, you know, so I I love to be able to translate any story that um, is necessary of me telling, yeah. you know, and I and I love to do it in my own way. So um, it was still very liberating the the song making experience because they were they were great songs. They are great songs. And yeah, they are. I had so much fun making. I was allowed to make them my own. Um, so, yeah, but it, it is it is extremely different, extremely different. There's just like an objective um, right. that you go into the studio for us to like record the song. So you'll get the songs prior to the sessions and then you go in and record them. But it's it's just as fun for sure. Yeah, that's cool. That is cool. So talk to me about the the two you have out. So why you texting me was the first song that you ever put out as a, a yes under your new you know identity and everything, right? Yeah, it's it's the first one which I I I really didn't um, see it happening, but there was like uh, the the songwriters that uh, made it with me. Um, shout out to Harlow and um Faras, who is also uh, one of my label mates. Um the songwriters that a song written it with me were um already like clued in on like the deal that was happening mm -hmm. so it was like uh i should have put two and two together that this was like the first song that that was probably going to come out but i just didn't see it coming you know and then the next you put out recently hopeful hopeful <laughs> yes um i released hopeful about a month ago also just to touch on why you texted me like I know that I wanted a ballad of some sorts for my first song. Um, but it's funny when I go into the studio, Adam, I'm not like really writing ballads a lot of the time, which is something mm -hmm. that I actually want to get get into uh, really soon. Just writing more, get on my Adele tip, um, yeah. you know, but I definitely know, knew that I wanted something slow and something that would be a good introduction to my voice. Mm -hmm. um, and why you texting me was actually like, the perfect song to put out for me the perfect first song and i mm -hmm. think everybody was aware that that that's why it is and it's like super relatable mm -hmm. you know it, it it definitely talks to like the emotional uh generation that i am a part of and mm -hmm. how sometimes we get definitely caught up in the whole relationship uh fiasco um yes. and how it definitely is detrimental to us you know more than instrumental a lot of the time unfortunately mm -hmm. um you know and it definitely touches on that but like i'm super grateful for the success that it's required and like the amount of streams like mm -hmm. it's, it's doing awesome crazy. and it's same with really the new good. one hopeful is doing awesome as well same with the new one hopeful is something that i oh my god like just the whole songwriting experience with hopeful was was great because very seldomly do i like to touch on um you know my my positive personality and song like it's mm -hmm. just weird it's like holding up a mirror to you for a two-hour session you know so it, <laughs> it could be weird but I it was special it was a special feeling that day and I was like you know what I do want to touch on this like um I I'm a big collaborator so um who I collaborated with that day was like you have this you know bright energy and I was like oh thank you and they was like let's write about it and I was like cool so then I started you know doing my pacing around the studio and like thinking of what the verse is going to be and then like just I came up with like misery loves company um and that's how literally how it how the song started and from wow. there just rest yeah. is history there you go rest is history. <laughs> yeah you said you got a new song coming out next month as well I have a new song yes called I don't know if I'm supposed to give the title away but by the time this gets put out Adam I'm pretty sure I'll have released the cover <laughs> art or whatever so um this is probably like I'm probably releasing it next week um but it's called show some teeth okay and it's pretty much about telling somebody to smile more like when I envision the song like while singing it I definitely envision you know that person that's like trying to holler at somebody and it's like yo you should smile more. Let me see them teeth. Oh, you know yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then it, it it's also like at the same time versus telling a person to smile more. It's also encouraging you to like, you know, like show some grit, you know, mm -hmm. about life. Like 
stop being so miserable. Like, you know, there's a lot to smile about, but it's much more edgy than what I'm making it out to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I cannot wait to hear it. And I really yeah. appreciate your time, Michael. You are so awesome. Thank you so much oh, for doing this. Adam. Oh my gosh. Of, of course, this was really great. Um, I'm loving the setup right now, like all the crystals in the back, but also oh, you yeah. were... You're amazing, Adam. You're amazing. Thank you. I do have one more quick question for you. I want to know if yes, you have any any advice for aspiring artists. Oh my God. Um so much. Um <laughs> always stay true. Always stay true to yourself. Um make sure before you get into this that you're doing it for the love of music and not anything else, because nothing will be able to carry you for the rest of your life if you're pursuing music no other love or no other motivation besides the love for music will be able to carry you through your career. So before you start it, really make sure you're doing it for the love of music and also for the love of people, you know, for um, making sure you're doing it so that they have something to smile about and, and giving them hope, you know, and, and positive vibes, you know? So, um, so stay true to yourself and also never take no for an answer. Bring it back, bring it back.